Okay, this is a short lecture on combinational number theory and it's part of the algorithms course. The topics we'll cover are prime numbers, modular arithmetic, GCD, extended GCD, inverse modulo, power mod, Chinese remainder theorem, finding large primes and discrete log. Okay, so what are prime factorization? So, so there are some basic facts about prime numbers. So prime numbers are numbers which are which cannot be factored into different uh, smaller factors, integers. And the prime numbers, the infinite number of them, they start with 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. And we can prove that the infinite of them. And every number can be uniquely written as a product of its prime factors. For example, 100 is 4 into 25, which is 2 into 2 into 5 into 5. So 2 and a 5 are prime numbers. So for the first homework, you have to do is write a program which prints the first 100 pri n prime numbers. So you type primes 100, it should print out all the primes less than 100. Okay. And also write a program called is prime. It just says give it a number 100. It says 100 is not a prime. And is prime 229. It says 229 is a prime. And then write the third program factor, which you give it a number 100. It says 100 2 colon 2 colon 5 colon 5 space 5. So these are the factors of 100. And factor 101, it says there's a single factor, which is, that means the prime number. So let's look at modular math. A is uh, equivalent to B, modular N, written like this, or the small n under the sign. That means is that A and B are the same under modulus. In C, we write phi the mod percentage sign 3 equal to 2 that means the remainder of 5 divided by 3 is 2 and we say 5 mod 3 is 2 uh, or 2 is the remainder 5 mod 3 5 divided by 3 and we can write like this also 5 is equal under 2 under the modular 3 and then then uh, when you multiply numbers under modulo, you can keep throwing off cast out the remainders. 3 squared is 4. 3 cube is 2. And 3 cube is same as 2. You can do, you can cast off in between also. You don't have to compute the whole number before casting off. So you keep those numbers small. You do 3 is to 100. You don't have to do 3 is to 100 first. You can do 3 is to 50. Cast off the extra, uh, keep only the remainder and continue. So it doesn't matter when you cast off. So casting off should be done as soon as possible to keep the number small. 3 raised to 4 mod 5 is 1 because 3 raised to square mod 5, the whole square. You can even do it square square. So then you get really fast computations, which is 9 mod 5, 2, the whole square, which is 4 square, which is 16 mod 5 is 1. And the next thing we are interested in is GCD, the, the greatest common divi divisor. So, given two numbers, you can take out a find the largest number that divides both of them. So, 10 and 15, the GCD is 5. And how do you do it? You pull out all the common factors from both 10 and 15. If you write 10, factorize 10 into 2 into 5 and 15 as 3 into 5, and then you t pull out the 5 and then left with 2 and 3 and GCD of 2 and 3 would be 1 so you left with 5 and similarly 20, 24 would be you factor it but factoring is hard so but GCD finding will be easier we'll see it later how to do GCD and two numbers are called relative prime if the GCD is 1 so, so for example 9 and 8 the GCD is 1 and for any two prime numbers, they are always relative prime because they have nothing in common. So for example, 13 and 17 are prime and you get 1. And if 1 is a prime, then also another number is small, then the prime is still you will get 1. And what are the properties of GCD? 
zero dc of a and zero is a and dc of a and k times a you can just pull out the a and it's, it's symmetric you can do dc of a b same as b a and the sign doesn't matter a and minus b is same as a and b and if it's a, both have a common factor k you can pull it out and then this is a interesting identity which will use to compute g series quickly if you have g series of a b the same as g series of b and a mod b the remainder of a divided b and it's also associative you can do it a b c in any order g series so let's look at euclid's g series algorithm is the oldest known algorithm from the time of euclid when a and b are positive numbers non zero uh, or maybe z greater than or equal to zero and then we just say g series of a b is g series of b and a mod b while b is not zero if b is zero return a otherwise it re recurs with putting the b out here and a mod b so this will be smaller than b so you yeah, guarantee that the algorithm proceeding very fast in fact it proceeds really fast so let's look at example gcd of 30 and 21 so first you put 21 on the side and 30 mod 21 is 9 then you put 9 here and and 21 mod 9 is 3 then you put the 3 out here the b3 is here and 9 mod 3 is 0 so you stop and 3 would be the gcd so now we know how to use Euclid's algorithm. So let's look at modular math. Modular arithmetic is a set of congruence classes rel relatively prime to a modulus number n. And the set forms a group under multiplication. It's called a multiplicative group of integers modular n. So what it means is that the set of 1 to n minus 1 numbers and you can multiply them, they will stay inside that group. And it's also called a primitive residue classes module n. And since uh, a a n g c d of a n is one, and b n is one, it implies that g c d of a b is n is also one. So the set of classes relative prime to n is closed under multiplication. So it collects all the numbers less than n which are relative prime to n, and that forms a a group multiplicative group. Let's see how we can use it. So it's a mod phi group. So mod phi, 1 into 1 is 1, 2 into uh, all these are there. So it's 4 into 4 is 16, mod 5 is 1. 4 into 12, mod 5 is 2. So you can see that every number, every row has 1 to 4 and every column has 1 to 4. Okay, in some order. So and you can use any of these numbers as gen to generate the remaining numbers by multiplying it repeatedly okay we'll see that later and for composite number it doesn't work you get zero so 3 into 2 mod 6 is 0 6 is a composite it's a, it's a, it can be factored into 3 into 2 so it, you can't actually have a group and these are the example of groups they form like that and if you're composite numbers what happens is that there are subgroups inside it. We'll not look at that, but if you're doing algebra, you can look at Hurstein textbook or something. Now let's look at the extended Euclid algorithm.